very much. Uh, I'm Tom Walsh. I'm a senior researcher in our uh, NLP team here at Snorkel AI. This is a, a great diagram by Meta from their Llama 2 paper, and it goes through the different phases that people generally talk about when they are talking about training an LLM. So when you have your pre-trained model, now we focus on the right-hand side, fine-tuning the model is typically done in two stages. You may start off with supervised fine-tuning, otherwise called uh, instruction tuning, and then maybe you're going on to more advanced alignment techniques, such as reinforcement learning from human feedback or uh, some preference optimization techniques like DPO. With supervised fine-tuning, the supervision signal itself comes directly from the instruction response pairs. We put in the prompt to the LLM, and then we look at the first token that it's predicting. And we compare that to the actual token in the gold standard response. Token by token, we do this optimization. And the idea here is we want the model to accurately understand uh, the relationship between the instruction and the response and how to follow these specific instructions. RLHF reinforcement learning from human feedback, what we need is a reward model. So the supervision signal comes from a model that can determine the quality and assign rewards for those responses from an LLM. And what we want to do using algorithms like PPO is adjust the weights of the LLM to increase the expected reward over time. The idea is that the reward model encodes some human values or preference. For example, higher reward could be associated with more harmless outputs. And we want our model through maximizing its rewards to be aligned with those harmless responses. And then building that reward model or quality model requires a lot of human feedback. We take uh, our instruction set, we generate lots and lots of responses. Maybe these can also be human generated. And we ask annotators or we use model feedback to rank them. And we have then a preference data set. From this preference data set, we train a reward model. This is typically a smaller model than the LLM you want to train. But the idea is for an instruction and a given response, it's able to assign a scalar score for them, or it could give binary feedback. Using uh, this offline reinforcement learning pipeline, this is where we actually change the weights of the LLM. We have our instructions. Our LLM generates a response. We understand how good that response is. And then we optimize the model using, say, PPO. And we do this iteratively. So your LLM updates over time. And we, say, converge on a model that is better with respect to whatever quality metrics we're uh, trying to instill in our reward model. The downside with uh, RLHF is it requires you to have a reward model. So those are quite expensive to build. And there are some problems to do with overfitting to reward models. And that sort of offline pipeline is very expensive. You have to iteratively update your LLM, produce new responses, score them, and update. DPO, direct preference optimization, is a technique that came out of Stanford last year. And instead of optimizing first a reward model and then your LLM, they wanted to address the question of why can't you use your preference data to directly optimize the LLM? You know what's good, you know what's bad in terms of responses. There must be some supervision signal there you can use directly. And what they found is they can optimize the model. It has its own implicit reward signal based on the likelihood of a response being generated. So through direct optimization, what DPO is trying to do is increase the likelihood of good responses, responses that meet your criteria, and reduce the likelihood of bad responses, say negative responses, toxic responses, whatever preference you've encoded in your preference data set. And then when compared to RLHF, this method can be more stable. It's certainly more simple, and it avoids the need to train a separate reward model. And then looking at some sort of more recent methods, these are ones we've been looking at in research. First, we have KTO. This is inspired by prospect theory in economics, which focuses on how humans perceive utility. So for your instruction response pairs, so we just need the two, we understand if a response is good or bad using a binary label. And using KTO, we can then use that to optimize the model. And the authors found that this is more robust to label noise than DPO. ORPO is a, a different technique. So that stands for odds ratio preference optimization. You may remember earlier that a typical pipeline involves, say, supervised fine tuning 
and then separately some sort of preference optimization. The authors of ORPO found that it was much more computationally efficient to combine these steps together. So you have a single loss function with two components. And they found that not only is this more computationally efficient, but it can outperform techniques such as DPO in some benchmarks. For RLHF and DPO, uh, again, diverse instructions are very important. But when you're coming up with preferences, we found it's very important to have very clear dimensions that you're trying to assess a preference over. For example, using a specific dimension such as clarity is better than, say, you know, pick which one is better across all dimensions. But if your dimension is quite subjective, we can end up with a lot of noise in our data set. So having well-defined preference dimensions, we, we think, is the way forward to having better preference data sets and better outcomes for uh, alignment. And the final thing is where you have humans or models creating these rankings, it's very important to avoid encoding human or model bias into them.